It is absolutely possible to manifest your best life. Welcome. And today we're going to be covering two amazing true stories, two very distinctly different stories about manifestation. The first being a young boy who simply wanted to manifest a puppy. He wanted a puppy dog, specifically a collie puppy, and we'll see how he got it against all odds and against the wishes of his parents. The second is a woman and her husband who wanted a life in Florida, and he was in the military, and he had just been assigned elsewhere, and yet she wanted to manifest that assignment to be in Florida. Is manifesting your best life possible? The following two stories are going to show us how, and absolutely that everything's possible with the power of imagination. These two stories are taken from The Power of Awareness, Chapter 23, Case Histories, written by mystic and the amazing teacher Neville Goddard in 1952. First up, The Boy and a Dog. This is a story of a very unexpected result of an interview with a lady who came to consult me, says Neville. One afternoon, a young grandmother, a businesswoman in New York, came to see me. She brought along her nine-year-old grandson, who was visiting her from his home in Pennsylvania. In response to her questions, I explained the law of assumption, describing in detail the procedure to be followed in attaining an objective. The boy sat quietly, apparently absorbed in a small toy truck, while I explained to the grandmother the method of assuming the state of consciousness that would be hers were her desire already fulfilled. I told her the story of the soldier in camp who each night fell asleep imagining himself to be in his own bed in his own home. So we'll pause to set the scene here. Here's a woman who came to Neville for consultation and coaching. He went over the method and gave the example of a soldier who manifested being in his own home in New York and no longer in the military, who was successful doing that, and how the procedure in which he used to be successful. And while the purpose of the visit was to coach the woman on how she could manifest her desires, guess who was listening carefully and notice what resulted? When the boy and his grandmother were leaving, he looked up at me with great excitement and said, I know what I want, and now I know how to get it. Surprised, I asked him, what was it he wanted? He told me that he had his heart set on a puppy. To this, the grandmother vigorously protested, telling the boy that it had been made clear repeatedly that he could not have a dog under any circumstances that his father and mother would not allow it, that the boy was too young to care for it properly, and furthermore, the father had a deep dislike for dogs. He actually hated having one around. In spite of this opposition to the boy's desire, notice how the intensity of the boy's desire and his comprehension the simplicity of him understanding what he needed to do based on what Neville taught, even as a boy, is such an amazingly powerful lesson for us. Neville continues, All these were arguments the boy, passionately desirous of having a dog, refused to understand. Now I know what to do, he said. Every night, just as I'm going off to sleep, I'm going to pretend that I have a dog and we are going for a walk. No, said the grandmother. That's not what Mr. Neville means. This was not meant for you. You cannot have a dog. However, notice the amazing results that followed. Approximately six weeks later, the grandmother told me what was to her an astonishing story. The boy's desire to own a dog was so intense that he had absorbed all I had told his grandmother of how to attain one's desire. 
and he believed implicitly that at last he knew how to get a dog. Putting this belief into practice, for many nights, the boy imagined a dog was lying in his bed beside him. In imagination, he petted the dog, actually feeling its fur. Things like playing with the dog and taking it for a walk filled his mind. Within a few weeks, it happened. The newspaper in the city in which he, the boy lived organized a special program in connection with Kindness to Animals Week. All school children were requested to write an essay on why I would like to own a dog. After entries from all the schools were submitted and judged, the winner of the contest was announced. Yes, you guessed it. The very same boy who weeks before in my apartment in New York had told me, now I know how to get a dog, was the winner. In an elaborate ceremony, which was publicized with stories and pictures in the newspaper, the boy was awarded a beautiful collie puppy. Yes, a collie puppy. In relating the story, the grandmother told me that if the boy had been given the money with which to buy a dog, the parents would have refused to do so and would have used it to buy a bond for the boy or put it in the savings bank for him. Furthermore, if someone had made the boy a gift of a dog, they would have refused it or given it away. But the dramatic manner in which the boy got a dog, the way he won the citywide contest, and the stories and pictures in the newspaper, the pride of achievement and joy of the boy himself, all combined to bring about the change of heart in the parents. And they found themselves doing that which they never conceived possible. They allowed him to keep the dog. Yes, manifesting his dream was not only possible, but by following the process of imagination, the process of using your imagination and believing it true, allowed him to actually have the dog he desired. All this the grandmother explained to me as she concluded by saying there was one particular kind of dog which the boy had set his heart on. It was a collie. And there we go. This is a wonderful lesson for us as adults because we complicate the manifestation process. Whereas if we keep it simple and simply do what is needed, the boy understood he needed to fall asleep believing that he had the puppy with him, that he was taking him for walks, that the puppy was his, and that he was playing with it and petting it, and that it was already his. By doing so, everything else simply unfolded and happened. Our next story is amazing. This is about a young couple. The husband was a military man, and he had just been assigned to a location that was not desired by the wife. She wanted to manifest his assignment in Florida. Notice how this unfolds and how her aunt worked with her using the power of imagination to manifest what was seemingly impossible. Follow along on our story as we begin. And keep in mind, these are actual true stories of manifestation. Neville begins, This was told by the aunt in the story to the entire audience at the conclusion of one of my lectures. During the question period following my lecture, on the law of assumption... A lady who had attended many lectures and had had personal consultation with me on a number of occasions rose and asked permission to tell a story illustrating how she had successfully used the law. She said that upon returning home from the lecture the week before, she had found her niece distressed and terribly upset. The husband of the niece, who was an officer in the Army Air Force, stationed in Atlantic City, had just been ordered, along with the rest of his unit, to active duty in Europe. She tearfully told her aunt 
the reason why she was upset was that she had been hoping her husband would be assigned to Florida as an instructor. They both loved Florida and were anxious to be stationed there in Florida and not be separated. Again, take a moment, friends, to realize that now we're going to hear the true story of how she and her aunt together actualized or manifested what she desired. Notice, they took off their shoes and turning out the lights in imagination. They felt themselves actually in Florida, feeling the warm breeze, smelling the sea air, pushing their toes into the sand. A mere 48 hours later, the husband received a change of orders. His new instructions were to report immediately to Florida as an Air Force instructor. Five days later, his wife was on a train to join him. While the aunt, in order to help her niece to attain her desire, joined in with the niece in assuming the state of consciousness required, she did not go to Florida. That was not her desire. On the other hand, that was the intense longing of the niece. And so we complete our story by understanding that her niece was the one who really knew how to apply the law of assumption, and she showed her uh, niece how to do that. And by doing that with her aunt, she was able to manifest with her that beach life living in sunny Florida, not in Europe and not in Atlantic City. So the answer to the question is manifesting your best life possible. Can you actualize it? Yes, you can take your dreams into reality by using the law of assumption. Please click and see my other videos where I actually give you detailed explanation of how to employ and use the law of assumption in your life, whether it's for a beach life, whether it's for a puppy or anything else. Yes, you can manifest your personal dreams and live the life that you'd like to have.